My name's Matt Denton, this is Mantis Hacks, and this is part four of my XXL giant Lego go-kart build. In this video, I finally get to test drive what I'm now calling my Mark 1 XXL Lego go-kart. Yeah. I'm calling it Mark 1 because no doubt I'll still need to make changes, but I want to try this version first. I want to see it moving, you want to see it moving. So let's try it, see what's wrong with it, and then go back and adapt it. But before I do that, I'm going to go through some of the comments and suggestions that you've left below in previous videos. And of course, I very much appreciate that, so do keep them coming. Please like, share, subscribe, you know the story. Let's have a look at the comments. Lots of people have been asking about what materials I'm using here, so first of all, let's cover that. This is all Polymaker materials. Most of this is PLA, but I'm using two types of PLA. So this is Polylite PLA, um, dead easy to print. I've never had any issues with it, and I've done hundreds and hundreds of hours of printing. Polylite is more brittle so I can snap the material there. Um, but it's still quite hard, but brittle. Polymax material, just as easy to print as Polylite PLA, but it's much tougher. So it doesn't snap so easily. And in fact, it's really quite hard to snap at all. That's the main material for the, for the chassis. I'm using Polylite for non-mechanical parts and Polymax PLA for the more mechanical components the pulley wheel on the rear of the uh, drivetrain. Now, I felt like I needed a stronger material again and it might need some additional heat resistance um, that PLA doesn't have. So this is uh, Polymax PETG, quite easy to print and uh, comes out really super tough and hopefully that's gonna get some good wear resistance on that. So the other material I've used is PC Max, which is a lot harder to print, but it's a really tough material. And I've used it on the front axles only, but um, you can literally tap, run a tap straight into that material, which is incredible. Now, a lot of people have uh, said to me, oh, you need to print those tires in rubber. They're actually in a Polymaker's Polyflex material, which is a TPU, so they are flexible. Um, so hopefully that's gonna give me some grip, uh, but also give good wear resistance on those tires. I had lots of comments and suggestions on how to approach the problem with the steering. And that is that right now it doesn't really want to steer. Putting a differential on the rear axle here or splitting the rear axle. Especially now I've gone with a twin drive, I could actually do an electronic differential, which is a lot, what a lot of people have suggested. A lot of the strength on the rear end of this go-kart comes from my solid metal axle that goes across the back end there. So once I've split it, I then need to rejoin it with uh, some kind of twin bearing outer tube that allows the two halves to move separately, but still gives me the strength across the back. But I think first I'm gonna try it with the solid axle just to see how bad it really is, and then we can improve Mark II from there. How much does it weigh? So I've got some scales here, so let's weigh it and find out. Yeah, 40.2 kilos, way too heavy. Let's take a look at the new drivetrain that I've put on the back. I've got two of these 149 kV Turnergy motors on here, the SK8 type. They're joined via that fixed axle right now. And I've also been given this uh, VESC 6 ESC speed controller by uh, Flipsky, which seems pretty good, very nice and easy to set up so far, and has been working well. And it also comes with a uh, soft start switch, so you don't get those horrible sparks when you plug the batteries in. Let's take a closer look at one of these drivetrains. Here's the mounting plate fixed to this uh, Technic brick using self tapping screws. Uh, there's also a bearing to hold it uh, concentric to the axle here. My motor already mounted in place and I've got my uh, tooth pulley wheel here with keyway already inserted and the grub screws to stop it from sliding off the motor. And I've got this quite simple belt tensioner here. So a couple of spaces here to get the belt tensioner bearings in the correct place and uh, just stand it off. The little washer here just to give an extra sort of surface area on the plate and the nut that goes on the back. So the nut slides up and down the slot and then you can tension it up from the other side without having to get a spanner on the back. 
Pulley wheel here, this is a 75 tooth HTD5 printed in Polymaker's uh, Polymax PETG, so it's nice and tough. Just take the belt tensioner and move it down into position. And then just tighten that up, stop it from moving. That seems to work really nicely, that system. And very, it's very simple to uh, adjust as well. I've made up this uh, motor side support arm, which is going to go onto the axle and onto the end of that uh, motor shaft there using this bearing. And when this is tensioned up, the tension of the belt does want to pull that motor in towards the, uh, the larger pulley wheel, so this should help that out. Here's the drive assembly on the opposite side with the disc brake in place. This disc brake has been turned down from a 200mm to 165mm. I've also got the caliper in place on here. It's supposed to be loose like this so that it can adapt to any uh, wobble in the disc brake, but it works very well. Found a really good spot for the batteries. They're down here at the front. A little tricky to get in and out, but uh, they're nice and secure here, which is the main thing. I've added some Velcro straps and I've also put them in LiPo safe bags. The next thing I need to do is add my Arduino to this special Lego plate that I've printed. The Arduino is the engine control unit of the go-kart. I'm going to add some extension cables, one for the accelerator, one for the brake, and also some output cables that will go to the VESC speed controller. I need to label up these cables so they don't accidentally plug them into the wrong pedal. And finally, I tidy the cables up and add some strain relief because I don't want the cables pulling out whilst I'm driving along. Now I need to add some cables to the VEST speed controller. I'm adding a serial port so that at a later date I can add an LCD screen to monitor the battery levels. Here's the Arduino mounted into a 2x2 LEGO plate. This is going to go under the seat and so I can get to the USB port to make any code updates. I've got the accelerator and brake plugged into two of the analog inputs and I've got an RC output going back to the VESC and also a serial input output going back to the VESC. Right now the code's very simple. It's reading the two input values from the accelerator and brake and it takes a minimum and maximum value. It then uses those values to scale the inputs to the out correct output data for the VESC. So I've mounted my uh, Flipsky Vest 6 into the case and attached it to the back. It's just pushed down on that Lego piece. Tidied up the motor cabling. I've also looked at putting a case on one of these. Uh, I'm not quite sure about it yet and it's never going to cover up the disc caliper as well, the brake disc caliper. So it's not ideal. Um, I put a little bit of detail on using the grill from a 1x2 brick. Um, but I'm not sure about this anyway. Uh, maybe leave your suggestions in the comments below. I've made a battery isolator switch into this 2x1 LEGO brick. It's fairly simple, it's an off-the-shelf 100 amp isolator switch mounted into a 2x1 brick with a hole in the back that goes through the Technic beam here with the cables coming out the back. And there's a nice big switch to turn it on and off. The little power switch has gone really nicely onto this module here and you can put it on either side of the steering column. The VESC is tuned up and calibrated with my accelerator and brake. So now I have these working. And also the brake overrides the accelerator so you can't accelerate whilst the brake pedal's pressed. You know, I think this might work. I've got a little bit of cable tidying to do, but otherwise it's finished and it's ready to test. Now I'm still concerned that it might not be enough power, but that's probably to shift me. Whereas my nephew Ruben, who's 10, is going to be a lot lighter and it's probably plenty powerful enough for him. And of course that's who I built it for, right? I've loaded up the van. I've got a location to shoot in. Uh, all I need to do now is enlist some help. Socially distanced James Bruton. Well, I've got this go-kart. Uh, I've got this go-kart. How about that go-kart? This is what we've come to see. <laughs> I've basically got the VESC roughly tuned up at the moment and I've limited it to 30 amps per motor. Okay. I've got a Bluetooth module on the back which we can monitor on the laptop whilst I'm driving so you can look at that and tell me what's going on. Okay. 
the tyres aren't very grippy. Also, the tyres spin around the hubs because they're not glued oh, on. Okay. So if I stop hard, it might just keep going and the tyres But then that's spin. helpful because you've got a solid back axle. There you go. So so it's your might, it's, my, it's my limited slip differential. That's exactly what I was planning. The front axles are entirely printed in PC Max, which is super tough, but I've got a spare one just in case. Oh, really? They're yep. just plastic axles? Just plastic axles. There's... I've got a big kill switch down oh, here, right. massive lipos down here, and some fireproof bags. Oh, yeah, they're own fireproof bags. So, um, what could possibly go wrong? Well, I think you'll have enough torque, but you might spin round in circles. Perfect, let's try it. All right. Key switch on, and then I've got a power switch down here. Okay. Oh yeah, you're taking a 30 amp, probably the pieces. Nope, 30, 30. Yeah, being that there's no load in it yet, it should spin without having any power on it. So I wonder if they're fighting each other a bit. Oh, right. Mm. This is boring, let's just drive it. <laughs> I've been told I've got to wear this. I'll be back in a minute. It steers. Get momentum. Woo, shitty. <laughs> yeah, that was 30 amps. I mean, it took a little while to build up, but once it got going. Yeah! <laughs> All right, we need more power. <laughs> So I've increased the current on both motors to 50 amps, but I've left the speed limiter on. So it's, well, it's 80,000 ERPM, but I don't know how that translates. It was still, I mean, it still wanted to go faster when I got to the end, so. Round two. I see a slight problem. <laughs> My front wheel's coming off. I forgot to glue the caps on. I might just have to glue something quickly. <laughs> That would have been fun, going along with one of the wheels disappearing. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Be these differentials <laughs> that's more like it should we go to 60 amps in <laughs> is my nephew on that he's gonna fly I'm gonna stay at 50 amps but I'm gonna take the speed limit off Alrighty. oh <laughs> I probably should have fixed the steering wheel on better. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Just a minor technical glitch. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that was not going to stop. I think the tyres were just spinning on the rims. I couldn't see what was happening, but I have to come in for a pit stop, I think. So I've hit a slight technical issue. The tyres are spinning so well now on the rims that the brakes don't seem to work. And I've pushed so hard, I've nearly broken my brake off of the front here. And so I'm going to spin up the wheels and brake. And you can see the tyres continue to spin on the rims. So I need to run a couple of self tappers into these or something before I really drive this properly again because right now it's pretty dangerous and I nearly hit a wall. I can't get that to anything near full speed. I mean, it's not even close. Yeah! It doesn't want to turn at speed. As soon as you hit accelerate, it just goes to a straight bottom. Yeah, it's made of Lego, Matt. Oh, yeah, so it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
that. That does help with steering. Yeah. Jamming the brakes. Brake steer, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good steer. Cool. Differential or no differential, that is enormous fun. Yes, I've got some changes to make, and yes, I've broken a few things, but... <laughs> Yay, I got it. Well, it's packed up and ready to go home, and uh, I can't tell you how much fun that was. Uh, I really enjoyed it, and I can't wait to get back on the cart and try it some more. Uh, now there's a few things I need to fix like the brakes and I need to look at maybe splitting that rear axle and making an electronic differential so it's easier to turn. But actually I'd probably rather do a speed test first with a solid rear axle just sort of keeping a straight line. And uh, I couldn't really get it up to speed in that warehouse so it'd be nice to find a long straight somewhere, do some tests and then look at making the modifications. But until then, like, share, subscribe. Bye.